Hey, hey, welcome to Cooking with Black Thumb Betty. Today I'm cooking cannabis free because my wife had a request for some strawberry muffins. However, if you want to go ahead and add some cannabis to this, I'd say about 2.5 grams of nicely purged FICO RSO cannabis oil, whatever you want to call it, added to this would be excellent. Go ahead and throw it in there with the butter. Um, but anyway, this was going to be straight strawberry muffins because that's what my wife requested. We just don't have enough frozen strawberries. So I'm going to go ahead and sneak a, a few sh uh, frozen blueberries in there too. Hopefully she won't mind. She probably will, but oh fucking well. Anyway, ready guys? One, two, three, go. Okay, so let's go ahead over the ingredients. As you can see, being a professional cook, even when I am just cooking at home before I do anything, I get my mise in place ready to go. That's just a fancy way of saying getting your shit ready to go. So when you're ready to cook, you're just cooking. You're not going to the cupboard and finding this and that and that. Get all your equipment out and ready to go so it's right there at hand. Makes everything so much easier when you're actually cooking. If you're a pothead like me, it makes it so that you don't accidentally forget or add too much of any one ingredient because everything is already measured out and ready to go. You just have to know when to add it and how to add it all right so here we go for the mixed berry muffins we are going to go ahead and pardon me i'm going to refer to some notes that are kind of sitting to the side so if i sound a little hesitant sometimes it's because i can't read my fucking chicken scratch handwriting okay so let's see what do we have here in this big bowl in this big bowl right here we have three and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour in this cup, we have one and a half cups of milk. I'm using powdered milk because that's what we have. And you know, hey, it's a pandemic. So I'm, I bet you everybody has some powdered milk. So one and a half cups of milk. And to make that, I used nine tablespoons of the powder and one and a quarter cup of water. Then right here, we have some spices. We have a half a teaspoon each of ginger and coriander and a quarter teaspoon each of dried lemon peel and dried orange peel. Right here, we have two tablespoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And right here, we have a half a cup of cornmeal. For the um, wet ingredients, well, brown sugar isn't really a wet ingredient, but it's gonna go with it with a wet ingredient. So anyway, for the wet ingredients, we have uh, two tablespoons of strawberry jam, fresh homemade strawberry jam, we are going to have, let's see, two teaspoons of vanilla. We also have one and a third cup packed dark brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar if you want. If you don't have brown sugar, go ahead and use white sugar with, um, let's say, one and a half tablespoons of molasses. We have four large eggs. And right here we have about three cups of frozen fruit that's been thawed, drained, chopped. So what we are going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix up all my wet ingredients together, including the brown sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up all my dried ingredients. So the flour, the spices, the cornmeal. And then I'm going to go ahead and quickly fold in the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. And then boom, boom, boom. They go into the muffin cups, into the 400 degree oven, for about 17 to 20 minutes or so. I find the best way of testing for muffins besides the toothpick method is um, a nice golden color on top. And also if you touch the top of it, if it doesn't go down when you lightly touch it, it's done. All right, so let me go ahead and get this camera set up in an angle that is both flattering to me. <laughs> it's gonna be very hard to do. And that gives you a good shot of what I'm doing. Not that you really need to see what I'm doing, but I'm bored and you're bored. So fucking sit back, relax, and watch me fucking cook, bitches. Okay? Stay tuned. All right. One ingredient that I forgot to put on the counter because it's in the microwave right now. It's a whole cup of unsalted butter. So don't forget that whole cup of unsalted butter like I almost forgot to tell you about. Here we go. First things first, we're going to go ahead and put all of our wet ingredients together here. I'm going to start with my eggs first. I'm going to give them a, a little stir. We're not trying to get too much air into this. A little bit of air is excellent because, of course, it will help the muffins, but you don't want too much air. You don't want to toughen up the eggs too much, okay? 
Now, if you were getting really fancy, you could go ahead and separate out some of the egg whites and whisk those fuckers up to a nice, uh, fluffy, soft peak, and then mix them back in with the eggs, and that would make for a really fucking incredibly fluffy muffin, but, um, uh, frankly, I am not going to do that because I don't really feel like it. I have carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass to whisk shit like that. So anyway, there we go. We got the eggs whisked, mixed, whatever. We're going to go ahead and do our milk next. I'm going to go ahead and add the strawberry jam to this as well. Make sure it's broken up in there so you don't have big blobs of strawberry. that'll do. I'm going to go ahead and add in the vanilla at this point as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add in two teaspoons of vanilla. Sorry if my hands are a little bit shaky. My edible is kicking in, so I got a little bit of nervous energy, but in a good way. Okay, so we have that. about my big fat hairy on there. Almost forgot about the goddamn yogurt, didn't I? In fact, did I even mention the yogurt in the ingredients list? Did I? I hope I did. If I didn't, there's uh, one and a half cups of milk plus a half a cup of honey uh, Greek yogurt. Jeez, I'm so sorry I fucked that up, guys. So, besides forgetting to tell you about the butter, I think I also forgot to tell you about the yogurt. And if I didn't forget to tell you about the yogurt, forget I said anything, because I'm not restarting taping this damn thing. Let's see, get that a little close up there for you. And you really want to make sure that yogurt is, it doesn't have to be completely smooth. There can be a few little lumps, but you don't want to have like a tablespoon sized lumps of yogurt or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, and don't mind my, uh. I have a, a very bad habit of biting my cuticles when I'm nervous or anxious or just, you know, awake. So my fingers just, uh, don't often look that great. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the brown sugar. Yes, I'm adding the brown sugar in with the wet stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and add our magical one cup of unsalted butter. Mmm, delicious. Look at that. So healthy. Mmm. Oh, it's good to be alive, isn't it? Good to be alive. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. I added the butter last because, um, you know, everything else, everything is mostly at room temperature, but still this butter is probably, you're going to see it end up hardening up a little anyway. Just wanted to 
give it a chance to really incorporate into everything all at once before it started, you know, resolidifying. Okay. So there's that. The only wet ingredient I didn't add, oh, look at what a mess I made. Where's the berries? Okay. So let's go ahead and, sorry, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And let's go ahead and put this there. So I'm going to go ahead and set the wet ingredients and I'm going to set the berries off to the side. Okay. Now we have our dry ingredients. Sorry guys, let me get my cup and whiz. Okay, I'll use my not my favorite whisk because it's kind of fucked up. So this is not my favorite whisk. It had silicon. Um, silicon kind of fell off. I really don't like using it because I'm afraid I'll get silicon in my food. In fact, no, I'm not going to use this. I don't feel comfortable using this. Sorry, guys. Uh, please stand by. Well, since I'm being filmed and I don't really fucking feel like pausing because I have this phone <laughs> wedged in a really awkward position and it's not really worth it, um, you know, this is just me. This is how I do things. I thought I had it all ready, but I did not. I forgot my whisk. And see, that is why me's in place is important because I just wasted a long time looking for this fucking whisk, which I couldn't find. So I'm just going to go ahead and use one of my little uh, mixer beater thingies and I'm just gonna this is just the flour um it's good to mix it up it lightens it up breaks it up gets a little air in there helps everything rise just a little better you don't need to do it too much because you don't want to activate too much of the gluten but doing that does does help get things ready I'm gonna go ahead and add our cornmeal it's Bob's uh, Red Mill Stone Ground Cornmeal has the best texture. You can use any kind of cornmeal. I'm not fucking picky at your fucking food, right? Um, I just like the texture of that cornmeal. It's excellent. This right here is the baking powder and salt. right here is all our seasonings God, this will work so much better if I had my real whisk so you know I'm a fucking idiot people do as I say not as I do apparently right okay I feel, I feel pretty good about that. Okay, now what we are going to do is, and very as quickly, uh, that almost made a mess. Whew. Anybody else have an issue? I have an issue balancing spoons on the side of bowls. I often, they often flip off and make a fucking mess. It's terrible. It's terrible. I should learn my lesson by now, but I don't. And I won't. I have to live on the edge. Okay. So, here, I don't know if you can see, but as you can see, the butter has started um, doing what I said it was going to do. I knew it was going to do that. No big deal. Yeah, fuck it. I'm good enough. So, I'm done with this guy. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to, now our goal is to quickly mix this into this in just a few quick strokes. We don't want to mix a lot or else they're going to get tough. They're not going to be fluffy. It's incredible 
the difference between a perfectly mixed muffin and an overmixed muffin. It's 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 incredible. Um, and I say this having overmixed many many muffins in my lifetime. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and add this to it. I'm gonna add just this plain wet stuff first and give it a couple quick twirls with my spatula, and then I'll add the um, the fruit into it and give that like one or two twirls. Okay. I want I don't want the fruit to get too macerated or whatnot in here. God, I'm really pushing my limit there without how full it was, right? All right. So I like to go from the bottom. One, two, I actually do count. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I try to only normally do 15, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. 12, 13, 14, this one's going to take a 20, I think, 16, 17, 18, 19, shit, 20, maybe not, <laughs> 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, I'm not really happy with that. There's still a little bit in the center. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five more. There we go. If I fucked it up, I fucked it up. You got to go with when it's done. You, you can't get set on like one particular, oh, it must be 15 or else you're fucked. No, you got to do it till it's done. Just don't overdo it, right? But can you see what I mean? Notice I'm not like, I'm not stirring the shit out of it. I'm just, ah! Sorry guys, I'm just um just folding it in kind of quickly. There we go. There you go, that's good. I don't think I've overmixed it. What overmixing does is it, is it for a muffin like or a quick bread is it activates the gluten too much and that makes um that makes it kind of elasticy and and not rubbery. I don't want to say rubbery, but you know when you're making bread you want that elasticiness so that um, big air bubbles can form and you get that lovely bread texture. When you're making a muffin, you don't want that. You want it airy, and you want it light. But sometimes if you over mix it as you would for for bread or something, you can end up making it really tough and chewy, and it's really unpleasant. So if you've ever had muffins that are kind of um kind of a little bit chewy and unpleasant that's why because the batter was over mixed okay you, you bored talk with me talking yet tough titties motherfuckers here's some more okay so we're gonna do 12 muffins to start this is gonna make 24 muffins um don't worry it's okay for your for your batter to sit that's just fine try to keep it in a cool spot you don't want to sit it right next to the oven or on top of the oven while you're cooking your other batch of muffins because that's just fucking moronic and i know none of you are morons even if you are potheads potheads don't have to be stupid y'all okay so i normally like to use a one third measuring cup to fill these but um to be honest they're all dirty <laughs> and this isn't a real tv show and i didn't really prep fucking at all this is just me cooking so we're going to go with a half a cup and hope for the best. Now, um, a lot of people say only fill the muffin cups like one half to two thirds full. I say fuck those people. Go a little higher. If you want a little bit of a muffin top, go a little higher than that. You don't want it filled all the way to the top or else you're just going to get like muffin river. And um, I mean, if that's what you're, you're into, go for it. But I wouldn't recommend it. God, is my kitchen super dirty? I don't know. Okay, enough talking. Here we go. Now, if you do want to leave your muffin batter sit for a little, you can. That'll uh, help develop a, some air bubbles in there ahead of time so your muffin will rise a little higher. I let it sit for a few minutes while I was chit-chatting with you motherfuckers, so I think we're good to go. Oh, and on, on that note, since I am doing two batches of this, the second batch, since it will have been sitting out while the other batch is cooking, is probably going to be a lot fluffier and airier. Um, no big deal to me. Uh, if I were, uh, making this for like a large group of people or for a party or something like that, I would, I would get out two muffin tins. I don't have two of the same size muffin tins. 
I have a big muffin tin and I have a little muffin tin and I have a giant muffin tin and I have a mini loaf tin and I have mini loaf pans. But the wife specifically wanted regular sized muffins. So she's getting regular sized muffins. I'll just have to do two separate batches. No big deal. I'm a good wife. So, you know, ask and ye shall receive. I'm filling up them, filling them up quite a bit. I might go back and take out like a spoonful or so. Um, since I did just say, if you fill them up, you're a fucking moron. And clearly I'm filling them up. Clearly I'm a moron, y'all. Okay. It's probably really fucking boring for you to watch, isn't it? Huh? Here, let's turn this around and let you in on some of the fucking action. Yeah, let's get some action shots. Papow, bitches, action. Here we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Woo! Exciting, yeah. All right, motherfuckers. Another scoop. Here we go. Two more. Two more to go. All righty. If you hear that clicking noise in the back, it could be dog nails, or it could be my convection oven going. It's uh, definitely uh, preheated well. It's probably been preheating for the last hour or so. Let's see. So. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and take out a little bit here. And 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 ah, oh, motherfucker. And let's go ahead and do this right here too. So didn't remove a lot, just a little smidge, which should help plenty. Yeah, we're gonna let these other ones ride because I might not be feeling lucky, but I'm feeling fucking lazy. So I didn't lick the finger. Yes, I did. Don't worry, y'all. I don't have the virus, and none of you motherfuckers are gonna be eating this anyway, even if I fucking did. So now that these are all done. And all, and I just licked my finger again. And these are ready to go. We're going to go ahead and pop them in the oven for about 17 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and cover this batter. It's nice and cool in my house, so I'm just going to leave this sitting on the counter until we're ready to go. All right, into the oven these are going. Top rack. <clears throat> Not all the way in the top, top rack in about the middle, middle to middle top of your oven, right in the center. And go ahead and start your timer for 17 minutes. Unless your oven runs super hot, you should not have to check on them before the 17 minutes is up. All right, everybody. So now that it's in the oven, at about maybe eight minutes, we're going to go ahead and open that oven up and check on it possibly rotate the pan around at least for my oven I know that I have to kind of rotate about halfway through so if you need to do that go ahead and do that but otherwise let that oven stay closed for the entire 17 minutes first 17 minutes anyway and then after that point go ahead and check on it like every two minutes if it if it's not done by 17 minutes okay it's been actually 17 and about a half minutes because I had to get my phone so I can take a video for you all I don't think they're quite ready yet myself. I want to go ahead and give these guys about another two to six minutes. You see how lovely that's looking right there? I want the whole top to look that gorgeous, okay? Now, if you wanted to right now, you could go ahead and put some sugar on there. If you have turbinado sugar or the sugar in the raw, that would be great. Sprinkle that right on top and you'll get that nice crystallized goodness there. I don't really see a need for that. It's just for us at home here. These are already decadent enough. So, okay, let's give this another couple of minutes and we'll call them good to go. Two bong hits and two minutes later, here they are. 
They're not quite ready yet, but just about. I'd go take another couple more bong hits, but my wife is outside right now, so I'll just settle for putting the timer on two more minutes, and we'll call it good. Okay, here they are after 21 minutes of cooking at 400 degrees. I'd say they are good to go, if you ask me. Looks good. Very 